Hello, bestie, and welcome or welcome back. I'm Bria, and I'm here to tell you everything a best friend should because I love you. A lot of you are interested in the topic of social media, so I've noticed. And we talk about that a lot here and there. My job as it relates to my experiences and how I can help you guys because I know this is a common aspiration for some of you. But of course, you can apply these things to many areas of your life. But for today, I wanted to focus on those of you who really are serious about making social media a career. For many, social media is more of a hobby and I love that for you. If it is a hobby, like this video is not for you to be honest. Let's revisit next Saturday. But truly there's a separation between people who think they want social media to be a career and the people who have the actions to back it up. I think the biggest mistake people make these days is saying, well, I wanna be a full-time YouTuber. I wanna make social media my career, but you're waiting for it to feel like a career. Whereas you need to go ahead and show up as if it's your career. Do you see what I'm saying? You really have to work backwards. You can't just wait for it to happen and for you to like see the money come in. You have to pretend the money's coming in. And I know that like that kind of sucks, but that's the reality of this gig. If you ask me, the results don't come until you treat it as if. And we talk a lot about, you know, acting as if showing up in a delusional way. And if you're serious about making social media a career, I need you to be delulu AF, okay? Real quick. <laughs> this video specifically corresponds with another digital guide that I make, which I'm so excited about. It is the digital guide on how to make social media a career. I'm gonna walk you through some things that will really take you from the hobby mindset to having a career where you can make upwards of six figures. I'm not a massive creator and I've made six figures from this job. So I'm not saying that in a bragging way. I'm saying that because if I I can do it, you can do it, and you don't have to have millions of subscribers or followers to do it. You just need to be strategic and know how to kind of finagle things. I'm gonna walk through those points with you here, but in order for me to go really in depth on the things that I did, the experiences I had, tips and things that I would suggest in your journey to becoming a full-time creator, it's all in the digital guide and it's all encompassing. This is probably one of the most intentional videos slash guides I've ever made. It is literally six years plus of knowledge, managers that I've had, their knowledge that they've bestowed upon me, combined experiences from my friends. There's so much information in this little digital guide that can truly help you. And it's really all the FAQs that I constantly get asked in my DMs. People literally somehow find my information and always email me asking these questions. And it's not that I don't wanna get back to every single one of you, it's that I cannot possibly get back to every single one of you. So this is the solution because I am a true believer that there's room for everybody online. If you're serious about it, you can make it happen too. I've seen it. I've seen it happen among so many people. I've seen so many creators start at different times. So it really is not too late. It's just a matter of getting serious about this. So let's get into it. So for those of you that know me, you probably have heard a little bit of this blurb already. And those of you who are new, I'd like to offer a little context into my personal journey and why it might resonate with you. I did not start in social media. Also, my career online has not been an overnight success. And I would still say I have days where I do not feel like a success in any capacity because this job requires a lot of maintenance to maintain the audience that you do build. I started in corporate America. What I will tell you is that I very quickly realized I didn't want to do it. And I found an interest in social media around 2017 or 2018. One of the most important steps in me becoming a full-time social media creator was I had to get the hell out of corporate America. My whole thing is, and my personal goal was to be my own boss. I like operating on my own schedule. I also like having the freedom to tap into what I'm passionate about, but I knew that that would actually require massive sacrifice to actually get there. And that we did, and we still do. So I had to adjust a lot of areas of my life to be able to leave corporate America and do this. So what I did was I slowly but surely inched my way out of the corporate world. Whereas people say all the time, you know, I don't have the time to invest in social media. And that's okay if you want to say that, but I didn't 
didn't have the time either. And I tell you guys that all the time. And really a big piece of making social media a career is that mindset and the way that you speak about it. If you believe you don't have time for this, then you don't. But someone will find the time. And that person, if it's not gonna be you, it's gonna be someone else. Tough love moment, but that's the reality of it. And I knew if it wasn't gonna be me, it was gonna be someone else. And I didn't wanna look back and be like, damn, I wish I took it more seriously. So what did I do? I found the time. I got very serious about time management. Time is really of the essence. And if you want to make social media a career, but you're not yet in the place to make it a full time job because you have another job, you have to get strategic about your time. Now, in the digital guide, I have some areas where you're able to break down your own schedule and create like a content calendar. For example, when I was still working a full time job, I had to start doing content after work because that was the only time that I had. Even if it was just an hour, I had to figure out how to make it happen. Maybe it was before work. Maybe it was on my lunch. I definitely was doing content every single weekend, Saturday and Sunday, and just trying to get at least four to six hours out to kind of make up for the fact that I couldn't do it during the week. It's kind of the mindset if you wanted to, you would, but you have to analyze your life where it is right now and see what makes sense for you. It might not make sense for you to post three times a day, but if you could do once a day, that's even incredible. Other things to consider when trying to figure out your time management so that you can make content creation a full-time career is, is there anything you're gonna have to make accommodations for? Do you have kids? Do you have pets? Can you be away for a long time filming? Do you need to batch create where you just do it all in one day or maybe two days versus trying to pump out content daily? You will have to kind of experiment to figure out what works for you, but there's no right answer to that. Even within my own experience, I've gone through different phases where I'm like a batch content girly and then the next Next minute, I'm not. So that's totally up to you and where you are in your life. But there's some tips in the guide to help you figure out how to create a calendar and how to adjust your schedule so that you can make this fit. Before you start making the content, you have to know what content you want to make. And here we go to niche or not to niche. OK, I really, really despise the word niche because as a human, I don't think you're a niche. I think you're a person. I've talked about this in my other videos. I just don't like it. But there are people people and the industry by industry standards who believe that there needs to be a middle ground. And to a certain point, I agree. I think that if I had to niche myself, I would say that I love self-improvement. I'm also like an emerging adult kind of girly where you see a lot of that on my Instagram. I also share my lifestyle. So the thing about my niche is that they're very broad because I don't want to box myself in too much. I made the mistake early on in my career where I was just a fashion girly. The issue with that was one, I wasn't passionate about fashion. I just did it because everyone else was doing it and they were making, you know, they were making a platform of it. I didn't know better. The other issue with fashion is that it boxes you in. And I don't want to scare anyone that wants fashion to be their niche. I just want you to think down the road and say, well, what if you change? I did. And then I had to kind of undo some of the things that I built. So for example, I was just a fashion girly. I built so many followers off of that. And then the pandemic happened. And girl, I was in my pajamas for like nine days straight. So it kind of conflicted with the audience that I built, where now I wanted to show other sides of myself. I wanted to have more conversations. There was some resistance to that because my audience wasn't used to that. They're like, oh, you're depressed in the pandemic. Sorry, no, link the shoes, girl. They did not care. Respectfully, that's fine too. But I had to learn that lesson. And it wasn't that it was the end of anything. It wasn't the end of my career, I just had to pivot. And that meant kind of like taking a few steps back. So of course, now you see this channel where I do get to talk to you guys. I created this safe space so that I could be able to talk about various topics with you and showcase more of my personality because I felt boxed in by doing just the outfits and stuff. So just be mindful that you are human. You do evolve. You're not necessarily a niche, but in terms of being in the industry and branding and what brands want to see and monetizing and actually making money off your career, you do have to kind of find a healthy balance and brand yourself in a certain way. But like I said, it can be done loosely and more on the broad side. But if you do know what you like to share and that's just the lane you want to go in, honestly, that's amazing. And it will make your growth experience a lot easier. It will. The thing about a niche is when you have a very specific one, people just know what to expect from you. So that's helpful. In terms of how you should define yourself, another thing in the guide that I go over 
over and how you can pick that out and how to do it safely and not get too specific, but also how to define your niche enough so that brands will be interested in you too. Let's chat about choosing a platform to start on. So basically you have your short form and you have your long form content. Something that I personally suggest is that you decide if you wanna go the short form route first or the long form route first. Now, some people like to do both. I do all kinds of content at this point in my career, but in the beginning, if you don't have a clear indication of if you wanna do more YouTube or more TikTok and Reels, that's something you wanna figure out because it's gonna cause a lot of burnout on your end. The energy that you need to run a YouTube channel is, I'm gonna be honest with you, it's a lot. You have to shoot, you have to edit, you have to engage with your audience, and editing videos can be very tedious in itself. So unless you can afford to bring in someone like an editor, you wanna make sure that you have the capacity to manage both. So there's more information on that in the guide as well. This is where my back hurts. <laughs> okay, how to get started. I just did a video last week that was about how do you expect to get ahead if you won't even get started? I will link that video in the description if I remember, but I highly recommend just watching that video, especially if you want to make social media a career because there is a massive mental block with this job for many of you. And even if you think you're super confident on camera, it is likely that you'll have days where you don't wanna do it, you get in your head, maybe the trolls are getting to you. It's a big psychological game. Every Everything, everything you need to know about this little mental battle that you do as a creator. I have my best tips in the guide in terms of the resources I would recommend, the support system that I would try to have in place, and what to do if you are having trouble getting started or you're too much in your head. The bottom line is getting comfortable in front of the camera takes repetition and it takes a lot of resilience because you're gonna have people who are gonna hate on you, you're gonna have people who are super mean to you, but it really just takes believing so so much in yourself and believing in the work that you put out and knowing that even if you're just helping one person, that's the point. So if you can just like focus on that, you will be smooth sailing. But obviously if life were that easy, <laughs> everyone would probably do social media, but it's not. So it takes a little bit of time and practice and hopefully the tips that I have in the guide kind of help you figure out how to navigate those tougher moments. Equipment is always a question that I get. What camera do you use? What microphone are you using? What tripod are you using literally any and everything so all of it is in the guide you will never have to ask me what equipment I'm using because it's in there for you literally every single thing that I use for my podcast my YouTube channel to make TikToks Instagram reels whatever I put it all in the guide so we never have to worry about asking again and it's in one place for you guys just because I wanted to make sure that you knew where to find it because there's so many links that I've put out that are just floating around on the internet that I can't even keep up with so it's there for you. Now growth is obviously something that everybody wants to master okay because for most people you think that when you get the followers that's where the success comes but I want to be clear and remind you that having a lot of followers does not mean you have a good community. You want to focus on having an engaged community. So think about it. Would you rather have 100,000 followers where maybe 100 of them, 100 out of 100,000 actually engage with you and look for you and constantly you know, are excited about your stuff? Or would you rather maybe have 10,000 loyal followers who are just always showing up for you? You have high engagement, they're always at everything you post, they're hyping you up, they're super happy about what you do. Would you rather have the more followers or more engagement. If it comes down to having a career, you're gonna want the engagement. Brands don't necessarily care how many followers you have. They want to see how engaged your community is and how many conversions that you have. Conversions just means, okay, if I put this microphone in front of you and I say, hey guys, this microphone, I love it so much. I'm partnering with this microphone brand. It's $20. If you would like to also check out this microphone for your social media content, you can check the link below da 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 okay the brand doesn't care about a whole lot except for how many clicks that got and how many sales it got. Sometimes there are different goals in brand deals. They might want more awareness where they just want people to have visibility to a new product. Other times they're gonna look for high converters. So a lot of creators kind of perform differently with that. But when it comes to having conversion or being able to have a lot of clicks or being able to drive a lot of awareness, that means your community has to be really engaged and care about you. That also means 
means you have to communicate to your community that this is a way that they can support you so that they can actually show up for you. And when they do, that's what's going to help you continue to get more opportunities with brands. So always, always, always community over followers, quality over quantity. Okay. But there's a lot of growth hacks that I did share in terms of bringing in new people. I'll give you this one. That's it's in the guide if you want to go into more detail, but I'll give you a little sneak peek. I've talked about this in another video too, but if you want to grow on a platform, you need to give the platform what it wants. Okay. Each platform is looking for you to do a very specific thing. And if you do that thing a lot, it will trigger the back end of the algorithm and and it will push out your content. I've already said in other videos that for YouTube, I grew over 100,000 subscribers in less than like a summer because I just started posting shorts. So in the guide, I tell you all the ways you can shake that ass for the algorithm per se and do what the platform wants so that it will push your content. And sometimes it requires you to dedicate more energy to that platform. When I grew my YouTube channel, I committed so hard to my YouTube channel that I wasn't really growing anywhere else because it took a lot of my energy. I had to put a lot of content out to be able to get the growth that I wanted, but it paid off and it paid off like overnight. It, it literally went from like crickets to all of a sudden we are growing like tens of thousands subscribers weekly. So if you need more insight and tips on how you can like kind of poach that algorithm, that's what I have in the guide for you so that it's easier to understand. And so you can be more strategic when you're planning what platform you want to grow. But I will say it's kind of hard to grow across all platforms at the same time, unless you really blow up on one of the platforms, but this will help you at least get a start. I'm so excited about this section in the guide about brand deals because I finally am able to get super specific with with you guys. A lot of you want to know, when do you start trying to get brand deals? I answer that in the guide. I have an entire section on how to know if a brand deal is legit. Cause unfortunately now there's like this thing where people will reach out and it's actually a scam. I did put this in the guide, but I'm also going to say this here. You should never have to pay to be a part of a brand deal. Okay. That is a scam. So there's other things in there like that to help you spot the difference and know when something is legit or not. I also, have the highly requested how to pitch yourself to brands and I even included a template because I just I love you that much so I know it can be really hard to kind of insert yourself in this industry and be a little assertive and get in front of brands but it that's what you got to do okay I've worked with many different brands and I've learned a lot of do's and don'ts. So I've included that for you so you don't have to make all the mistakes I have, but also just to kind of give you a shortcut so you can get these pitches out and get yourself in front of brands and get that money, honey. How to price yourself. Oh goodness gracious. This is the conversation of the century. It's really hard to know how to price yourself as it relates to social media, but I will say there are a few generic things that you can do to kind of figure that out. So for for example, one thing you can do is just literally ask people who are similar sizes to you that you've connected with and networked with. And there's other things you can do if you're not really sure how to price yourself where you can still try to get a really good deal without lowballing yourself. Cause that's a mistake I see people make all the time is they'll just like give out a number that's super low. And it's like, girl, like the brand had that much money. You just like sold yourself short, but they're not going to tell you that because that means more money on their end. So lots of tips on how to price yourself. So management. I actually have a manager and I've had a manager since like very early on in my social media career. A lot of you have had questions along the lines of how do you know if someone's a good manager, what things to look for, anything that might be a red flag. Girl, I have had crazy experiences with management, but I will say for the most part, I've had decent experiences. And at some point or another, it's just, it's not that like I left any of my management in the past for like a really big reason, other than the fact that I felt like I outgrew them or I just had different goals. So it's not really a big deal if you leave a management company, but I will say I've only had one bad experience where a manager was stealing from me. And so obviously that's like so unacceptable. There are a lot of directions that that can go in. Luckily in my case, we caught it when it was in a decent place, but because of experiences like that, I'm able to tell you what to look out for. I'm able to tell you what kind of transparency you should have with your management. And 
And what's a, what's just a fat red flag. Okay. There are things today where I will absolutely not do with management. So for example, one thing I absolutely won't negotiate on with management is changing my email. So typically when you sign with management, they have like an agency email. It'll be like, let's say it's like, there's a management company called creatives. Okay. They'll have an email for you. That's like Bria at creatives.com so that it goes directly to your manager. You might have access to it and you should have access to it. If they're going to make you do that, you need to have access to it. But I won't do that anymore because there have been instances where the password was changed. I was not given access to it and I couldn't see that a lot of my emails were going unanswered, unread, and that means missed opportunities for me, okay? So these are the things you wanna look for with management and the questions you wanna ask, but some of these you wouldn't know until you go through a bad experience. So that's like just one of my things. So I always opt to keep my Gmail and that way I have visibility on everything and I like to pass it along to my management myself. Some people don't care about that and everybody's different, but I just give you my take and why in the guide. So, but ultimately it's totally up to you how you wanna go about that. So lastly, but very important, you wanna make sure you are covered legally, okay? It is you up against corporations. So if something goes wrong, if something gets missed, you do not wanna get in trouble. Also, you're signing a lot of contracts as a creator. So that's one thing to acknowledge. There can be very sneaky verbiage with some of these brands. I'll give you an example. Not in my situation, but I have heard where brands will have sneaky verbiage that says, we can use this video forever. And it's it's in this like fancy lawyer verbiage so that you're not going to understand what that means if you don't have a lawyer translate it for you. So what you end up doing is accidentally signing away your life in that video without getting paid for it. Okay. Not cool, unacceptable. And you want to make sure that you have a legal team that can interpret these documents properly or you want to make sure you have an attorney that can overlook these things because I've seen some really unfortunate situations where people get stuck in contracts and you don't ever want to sign for something so long especially when you're growing because you're going to keep growing your price is going to keep going up you don't want to put yourself in a situation where other brands can't work with you because you are like signed to another brand so there's some legal advice in the guide to help you detail with other legal information in regards to your tax how to like file a business if you're going to be an LLC or if you're going to be an S Corp, all that's in the guide. And then I have a little advice on financial strategy because if you do become a full-time creator, which is very exciting, you do have to learn how to document things properly because you'll be filing as self-employed and you want to make sure that you know how to organize things. So when like tax season comes around, your ass doesn't go to jail. Okay. (laughs) So there's financial help. I have some recommendations on apps I like to use use and resources that I like to use to keep everything in check. So I'm just so excited for you guys. You know, if anyone is rooting for you to make this a full-time career, it's your bestie B. Because for me, social media has literally changed my life. I was working a job I was so miserable about, and now I just signed and I am building a house. And it truly is because of the community I built. And seriously, thank you for being a part of it because I would not be there without people and supporters like you who believe in me. And I equally believe in you. And I am telling you, look at me, look me in the eye. There is room for you. There is room for you. And this is not going to be this picture perfect experience. You need to understand that it's going to be a messy experience. There's going to be days when you don't feel good about yourself. There's also going to be really big wins and really high highs. So don't let that stop you. Just know that consistency trumps everything. I'm so excited for you and you know I'm right. You know I'm right. So if you want the guide where there's so much more information than what I said in this video, it's down there below. I I would never have time to like actually cover every single thing in this guide. So now it's there for you. If you want to get it in five years, I'm going to leave it up there for you. If you change your mind and want to come back in 10 years, I'm going to leave it up there for you. The guide's there. But anyways, let me know what you think about the guide. If there's anything you would like to see that I maybe forgot in the guide. We can always do a version two. So let me know your thoughts on it. Anyways, I'm excited for you guys. And as per usual, I'll see you next week.